This is the Backlot 605 Podcast, and it is now time for another interview from the Backlot. Welcome to the Backlot 605 Podcast. I am your host. I am Casey Kelderman. With spooky season now in full gear, the Netflix of horror, Shudder, has been crushing the last few weeks with some stellar exclusives and original films that they've been putting out. And, I mean, every week it seems like Shudder is putting out a, a new movie that's that's just uh, taking over the horror uh, little corner of the internet. And one of those is, is today's topic, which is The Cleansing Hour. I am joined by the film's writer-director, Damien Levesque, and I am joined by the film's star, Alex, Alex Angelis, uh, guys, welcome to the show. Uh, I'm so glad to, to get to talk to you about your film, and uh, yeah, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I just got to say a big uh, congratulations on the success of the film. I mean, to land a, a horror film on Shutter these days is kind of seems like the the go to for for horror films these days. That's the place to to land on streaming, especially, I mean, this is the perfect time of year for this movie to, to debut on shutter. Everybody's in, in the mood to watch some spooky movies. And this is, this is one that fits right in with everybody's Halloween uh, festivities and everybody's trying to get in the, the spooky movies. And this definitely fits in, the, in with that. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's, it really is kind of a dream come true. I mean, shutter is sort of the perfect home. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I made this movie for the horror community. I made this for horror fans. It's a, it's a genre film, you know, made by a genre filmmaker for the genre community. So uh, horror is the best home for us, no doubt. Yeah, the, the film is on Shudder as we speak. And what has been the, the first initial response has been so far for the movie? Well, I've just been blown away. I, I mean, I, you know, it dropped last night. Um you know, for the UK and people in the UK started watching it. And then the reviews started showing up on the, on the page on the shutter website. And it's just overwhelming. People love it. And then like, that's, that's such a great feeling. Um, I mean, just, we've got five skulls right now on shutter, which is like, that's pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and we've got a great rotten tomatoes review and the re- just like the reviews have been overwhelmingly positive And I just feel very blessed to um, have had, the opportunity to make the film, but also to make the movie with, you know, such talented actors. And, you know, Alex is, she stole the show, you know? <laughs> Thank you. I, um, I have been having such a weird morning with like my friends that are like, I saw that your movie's out, but I'm very afraid. <laughs> I'm like, don't be afraid. It's just me, <laughs> but I have such a different perspective. Apparently it's really scary. Damien. I don't know if you knew this. I just have to take people's word for it. I'm pretty desensitized by it. I, right. I, I, I guess I know how to. I guess I know how to scare people, which I guess is a good thing. Um, yeah. You know, I've, I've I've seen the movie a couple hundred times, so I'm, you know, uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm excited. I, I'm, we're, you know, I'm gonna. I love it when people say they're scared by it. That is the best compliment of a director could get when you yeah. make this kind of movie. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had a chance to to watch the movie, and I do got to say, this is a pretty damn scary movie. And I mean, the scariest part for me, she's in the room right now. Like, Alex, you are are tremendous in this movie. You are terrifying uh, and very sympathetic at the same time. It, it's a fantastic performance. And man, I mean, your performance in this gave, gave me chills watching it. It did. Thank you. That is such a great compliment and it was so much fun to play i mean like you said it i get both like sort of the extremes of the uh, i go the gamut mm-hmm. i'm hopefully a sweet girl next door and the monster it's the best of both worlds <laughs> yeah and and that's kind of the a little bit of the the tone of this movie though too you kind of get the best of both worlds of what what like genre fans love we we love the outright uh gory scary horror movies we also love comedy and there's a lot of comedy sprinkled in this movie too yeah. damien, damien for those listening what, what what's a brief synopsis of the movie and then the next question after that where did this the the tone come from within that uh the the plot of the movie i'm sure well uh, the 
brief synopsis is um, it's a movie about these two guys that run a webcast where they 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 broadcast staged exorcisms that they're passing off as real and uh, when their actor for that for the particular show doesn't show up, the director of the show asks his fiance to stand in and uh, be the possessed girl. And she ends up getting possessed by a real demon that holds them hostage on their set and gives them until the end of the show clock to get out alive. And they have to figure out how to do it. Meanwhile, the uh, fake priest is forced into doing horrific things on camera and the viewer count starts to rise. So, um, yeah, so the, the, you know, I play it pretty serious, but I, I tried, I really did try to use every opportunity to inject a little bit of levity in there to give everybody an opportunity, you know, the chance to breathe and laugh. Um, you know, the movie's very meta, you know, you're, if you're watching the cleansing hour, you are watching people watching a webcast and it's all, you know, very self-reflexive. You are, um, meant to sort of think about the irony of the fact that you are participating in the joke. Um, so uh, I'm making fun of the, I'm making fun of like our, our silly culture with social media and the kinds of things that we do to try and strive to get a blue check mark to, you know, sort of legitimize ourselves. Um, but, you know, a tone is always a hard thing when you're making a movie and especially when you try and mix something serious with something funny. Um, I, we worked very hard to, to nail that. And I, I hope that everyone feels the same way that you do, Casey. Um, I, I think that, I think that we pulled it off with a little bit of humor in there. Yeah, I definitely, I, I think the, the, the concept of the movie itself is already has humor ingrained in it's because it's, it's about a guy who's, uh, masquerading as an exorcist and performing these, these lot, these quote unquote live exorcisms for, for people's amusement. And I mean, there's, there's, yeah, like I said, there's plenty of uh, levity in this movie. And I mean, one of my favorites is, is that you have a, uh, a, a younger uh, member of society, a young boy watching this and kind of, you know, covering up or cheering along with, with, with the whole thing. Like he's, he's probably been watching this now for, for many episodes of the cleansing hour. And it's, it's really fun to, to see could be, uh, because in, in real life, there is these younger audience members. I mean, everybody has access to the internet. If you have a phone, right. you could watch something like the cleansing hour right now. It, is that something that you took away when coming up with the, the, the concept for this movie? Where did this idea for this, this uh, fake exorcist type show come into play? Well, you know, I think it had its, it had its genesis in my, in my background in reality TV. I've been an editor for 15 years. I've cut everything from narrative feature films to documentaries to entertainment news. Uh, but I've also worked in reality TV a lot, which is anything but reality. You know, there's a lot of scripted content that is passed off as reality TV. And I'm fascinated by like the power of editing and the way that you can trick people into thinking that something is authentic by just like, cutting to someone's facial expression. So there was that combined with my, you know, subsequent fascination with people liking to watch videos of like select like the world star videos and of people doing outrageous things like the shaky shaky cam with uh, you know grainy cell phone footage of people doing crazy stuff and uh, all of a sudden it sort of lends itself to you know verite it's authentic it's more real because it's low quality and it's a shaky camera so it, i sort of combined those two ideas of okay the low quality video with you know something outrageous happening and then my love of horror films and specifically exorcism movies, um, what would happen if we kind of bring that together and have two guys that try and fake a bunch of people or try, try and convince a bunch of people they're performing real exorcism. And the whole thing happened, you know, I wrote the script before we started seeing these news stories of people doing horrific things online, you know, everything from mass su shootings to sh suicides, you know, like the, the, the script was actually written before that kind of stuff started happening. So. Sadly, I, it's a bit prescient, but, um, you know, the time that this movie's coming out really is, is very appropriate for us to sort of like sit back and think about, you know, <laughs> our, the, what, the role that social media plays in our culture and, and how horrifying it truly can be.
Yeah, I mean, everybody's everybody's at home right now. I think now more than ever, people are just taking in content just on, on an hourly basis, just new content. They are always striving for something new. And this seems like if the Cleansing Hour was a, a real streaming television show, like I think people would actually hop on, on, on it. And if something crazy happened, like what happens in the movie, I mean social media again would would blow up like like what happens in this movie and then you 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 touched on the authenticity of this movie i mean i think a big part of that for me as a as a viewer was the acting in it and i mean alex you were were tremendous and i mean your co-stars are are just great in this movie too i think you all have a very very interesting chemistry throughout the movie as new layers are revealed and uh, Alex, how did you become a part of this project? And what, what's been your, your, your favorite part of this uh, entire process for this movie? Um, well, I had a very traditional uh, way of getting involved with this project. I, I auditioned um, and I, Damien liked me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was really actually, it's, I feel so lucky to have been picked because I, you know, I'm sure there were other candidates that weren't as, or that are more of a draw than I am. Um, I'm at this level in my career where I feel extremely lucky to be involved in a project like this with my co-stars and, um, (laughs) and to that, uh, the chemistry between us, that is a lot having to do with Damien giving us the space to kind of find our dynamic, um, you know, uh, he didn't, he, he knew exactly, Damien knew exactly what he wanted, but he wasn't afraid to like sort of be loose. And I felt so free on set and that just happened organically. Yeah. And your character's kind of like, she's definitely run through the ringer in this movie. Was that something difficult for you to, to, to kind of transition and, and sometimes yeah. in a single scene going from, like you said, the girl next door to, you know, being possessed by a demon. Was that something hard to, to work the transitions between the two? Uh, I had to get very specific. Um, but I mean, that is just an actor's dream, you know, <laughs> that's the fun, juicy stuff. Um, I actually, funny enough, had the most trouble <laughs> um, in sort of the later days of the show. We went back to me being like in the order of filming. We shot all of the gory stuff. <laughs> and then there were a few days where it was me like in the beginning where I'm not possessed. And I actually freaked out a little bit. I was talking to Kyle. And I'm like, I feel so nervous. How am I going to play this part? <laughs> like, like I had a harder time being like a normal human person, but it worked out. It, it's just because they were so different. It was like in the middle of the movie, I had to play a different role and you get very into the role that you're playing. So I was in a mode and then I had to switch, but it worked out. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I think it de- it definitely worked out great. I mean, like like I said, you are great in this movie. And when one thing you just touched on is some of the the effects and and the uh, the transformation your character has. But also throughout this movie, there's so many crazy special effects in this movie. And what was what was that like to take on both as a director and for you, Alex, as an as an actress? What was that like to have so many different special effects in 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 this movie? Um. Well. That was like taking it one bite at a time. You know, I think there was a day where we had three major effects and and it was just like, okay, we're gonna take this one and chew it up and and do our best. And, and it, you know, each one was such a team effort with the special effects team and the makeup and the, you know, uh, people squeezing blood out of a balloon and like <laughs> <laughs> prosthetics and um, but I mean that was kind of fun to geek out on I mean like physically challenging but also again actors dream kind of stuff mm-hmm. maybe I wouldn't want to do that every day but it was fun <laughs> for a few days yeah when the, when the show gets going it's it's there's Every there's there is some sort of effect or special effects, makeup, stunt, pyrotechnic, um, you know, uh, 
along the way and we just had to approach it like like Alex said, sort of like one bite at a time and not let not try and get overwhelmed by like the collective amount of stuff that there is, but rather just think, okay, we're just gonna do this eighth of a page here where where this light explodes or where, you know, uh we've got cables hooked up to a stunt guy and we're gonna flip, you know, flip Kyle over Alex's shoulders or, you know, whatever it is. Um that and, looked incredible. Uh, like when I watched that, I was like, did did that happen? That's, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that was uh. Well, I think those were both stunt performers, right? Or were you were were you doing? Was it you and this? Were you was it you and then you were holding in a stunt performer? I don't remember. We had a lot of cable work in the movie. Yeah, I'm just um, saying. Like, we, I remember both Kyle and I had stunts that we got stunt people to perform, but it was like half our performance and half theirs, and I just like is seamless. And I was like, wow, good job, Kyle. Wait, that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it, it was it, like, it was, there's a lot of, there was a challenge, you know, we were shooting six to seven pages a day and we had usually a different combination of pyrotechnics and makeup and special makeup effects in each of those days and, and visual effects too. So, you know, it took a lot of planning. Um, and it also meant that I had to be very efficient with the way I shot. You know, we, I didn't shoot anything that I didn't use and I knew exactly how I was going to edit it whenever I went in. Cause I, I edited the movie too. I've been, uh, you know, been doing it for a while. So, um, it was a challenge, but gosh, it, it paid off. Yeah. I think I, th I was surprised by how many special effects were in this movie. I was not, not expecting that going in because you, you look at the cast, it's, it's, it's pretty much down to the three main characters throughout most of this movie, but then you're, 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 you're throwing, you know, just uh, crazy monsters out or even Alex's effects as the demon. Like there, there's a lot going on in this movie and I think it all works, works very, very well. And I mean, I, I have to ask you about the, the ending of the movie. We'll not spoil it, but was that always the plan to go that big with the ending? Because for me, as as a as a horror fan, when when the reveal is is let out at the end of the movie, I, I it's it's a fist pumping moment in a way because it's it's like yeah, you you went there with that, and was that always the plan to go that big? And then even over the the credits of the movie, I mean, we we fully explore how this affects the entire world in a way. Was that always yeah the yeah plan? that was always the plan? Yeah, it was. Um, I. I I'm particularly fond of our, of our, you know, our, our ending, our main on ends credit sequence, because it's another opportunity to sort of like continue the narrative. So, you know, don't shut the movie off when the credits start because there's more there. That's, you know, good advice. But um, yeah, it was always the plan. It was just the, the thing was we had to make it bigger than the short film. You know, if anybody saw the short film, um, we, we had to make the ending feel bigger than the short film. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely lo love the ending and where, where you left off with that. And uh, I have uh, just a couple more questions for you. Next up, what, what's what's next for both of you? I mean, I mean, we're we're in a crazy world here in 2020. But do you guys have anything else that you're you're working on or uh, have have plans for in the future? Um, I I do, but I just before. Um, we've already passed the subject, but I remembered one of our biggest effects was with Daniel with the oh, fire. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, kind yeah. of that, that, was a, that was hard. Yeah. That was a very complicated sequence, by the way. If uh, the, the, the sequence where, okay, spoiler alert, anybody who's listening, stop, put your earmuffs on. Uh, the <laughs> sequence where the, the special effects crew member gets set on fire was very complicated to film. And uh, because we had to, well, for a, for a variety of reasons, it was all going to be, it was CG fire. And um, we had to shoot it with his burn suit off and the burn suit on. And it took time to get into the burn suit. So we were filmed, I think we were filming something. We filmed half of it, went on to film something else, and then came back and filmed the other half of it. And involved choreographed lighting, lighting effects. And wow, gosh, and he was in a lot of work. Full, full like burn scar suit, and it was like a hundred degrees. I swear. Yeah, and <laughs> it was. That just happened to be on a day. He's in like this fully latex suit, and it just happened to be on a day when we all but lost our air conditioning on the stage, 
So it was extremely hot. The one air conditioning unit that we had, we took the giant hose that was coming out of it and just like put it on him so that he could cool off. Uh, it was, it was a rough, <laughs> it was yeah. so rough. I have pictures of that. that was, Daniel, uh, Daniel Hoffman Gill. That's, he was great. Daniel Hoffman that Gill. Trouble. That's a good actor. Gosh, that guy was, what a champion. Yeah. But, oh, okay. So what's next? Why don't you go first, Amy? Sure. Uh, well, I've got uh, two movies I'm working on right now. I've got a, a, a contained, the, the smaller of the two is a contained creature body horror that's, uh, you know, set inside of a house during a blizzard. And um, I've got a classic haunted house movie that's set against the Irish countryside and integrates creepy Irish folklore. So uh, these are two movies that we are financing at the moment. Um, I have a completely different movie coming out. <laughs> it's, a, it's a romance called Harvest of the Heart. Um, it was actually one of the first movies to be greenlit after quarantine uh, because it was a very small crew and we were in rural Oklahoma. And anyway, um, that should be coming out soon. And I also, on the behind the camera uh, arena, I have a short film called Seancing that I directed and wrote and directed, and that's going out to festivals now. Uh, so that's what I have going on. Wow, very exciting. I mean, uh, we're in October, but I think after October, I think everybody's definitely going to be looking for uh, a cleansing of the horror movies, and I think a romance <laughs> movie definitely would, would fit in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> last question i have here um and, and this this is for both of you so we're in we're in october what i i love to do is is i always like to have double features with my movies i can't just watch one a night you know you always got to pair it with something else so what what's the movie you guys would pair with the cleansing hour hmm that's a good question hmm uh. Oh, that's if you want to pair it with something, huh? I'm gonna think about that. I mean, I think the 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 obvious is probably The Exorcist, just because of the subject matter. But I mean, I, I well, Unfri I Unfriended was pretty good, and that's uh -huh. kind of a that that's sort of you know in the same tone. Um, I mean, it's the same world at least with uh -huh. the technology and everything. I enjoyed Unfriended. That would be a good one because it's 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 not exact. It's kind of a ghost movie, mm -hmm. but it's also you know people it's like it's a screen movie. Yeah, Unfriended could be a good pairing. Um. So I am gonna reveal something about myself <laughs> with my answer because I I before now was not a horror movie connoisseur. Um, <sighs> not my genre. <laughs> Uh, but one of the movies that I have watched is The Babadook and I'm going to like, it's a little far fetched my connection here, but I think that Lane, my character is a strong female, uh, fighting against a dark force. Mm -hmm. And I think the same is true of the lead in Babadook. And that was directed by a woman. And she, I thought that she said something so profound, so totally different tones, <laughs> but both excellent horror movies. Yeah, I definitely think those those two fit to, fit together really great. I mean, I mean the other the, the one I had thought of was was Grave Encounters just because that is also about a a, a fake television show where they're ghost hunting. This is very much the same concept of uh, a, a fake exorcism show. So I think that would definitely go together well and uh yeah i mean you can there's so many movies you could pair this with and have a great double feature night and yeah you know uh, to that on that note uh, I, the last exorcism was a movie that i that i really enjoyed it was similar about a guy who's you know faking exorcisms uh that would be a fun pairing just to sort of like have two movies that are in you know similar subject matter so that would be a really good one to mm -hmm. watch too yeah. So again, this is the the cleansing hour. It's available right now on on Shutter. And uh, yeah, thank you both for for coming on the show. Do you guys have uh, social medias you would like to plug? And uh, yeah, anything else? Yeah, you can uh, find me on Twitter and Instagram at Damien Levesque, 
And uh, please hit me up. Let me know what you think of the movie. Um, I am also on Twitter and Instagram with at Alex Angeles. I think you can see my name spelled here in my little corner. Yep, that's it. <laughs> Perfect. So again, go go check them out on on social media, and please go check out the movie. It's it's it is perfect for this season. I I, I had a blast watching it, and I hope uh, everybody else goes and checks it out as well. It's good Halloweeny fun. Yes, definitely. Right. Alex, Damien, thank you guys so much for for coming on the show, and uh, congrats on the film again. Thanks, Casey. Once again, a big thank you to Damien and Alex for joining me on the show today. This was a a blast to talk to to them about the film. And yeah, I I, I hope everybody goes and checks out the film. It is available right now on Shudder. That is The Cleansing Hour. If you liked this and you you want some more of the the Backlot 605 content and you want to hear some of the other uh, interviews that we've had or if you want to check out our weekly podcast, please do so. You can find this podcast on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Google, Amazon Music, and on YouTube as well. You can check out the video on YouTube. Uh, Please give us a a like and a share on those, and uh, please subscribe to all those uh, or whichever one you use. Please just uh, give us a a good subscribe and check out all the the other great content that we do have on the show as well. Uh, If you want to follow us on social media, you can check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, just simply at Backlot605. And again, I'm Casey Kelderman. We'll check you out next time on the Backlot of South Dakota.